So what we want to do to try and, and address the issue of, of what is life uh, is we want to look at six characteristics of life Um, and, and we'll talk about characteristics that all living organisms share. And, and as you think about all living organisms, don't just think about your dog or your cat or, or your horse. Think in terms of, of the broad spectrum of life, which would include plants and uh, all the animals, such as sponges or jellyfish, um, mushrooms, mold, um, algae, unicellular organisms. So think in terms of, of all living organisms and, and the six characteristics that um, they might display. So the first one, what I would consider to be the hallmark characteristic of life is, is the idea of the cell. Uh, some textbooks say that the cell is the fundamental unit of life. And so, if it's living, then it must be cellular. Now, consider the converse of that statement. If it's cellular, must it be living? And of course, the, the answer is no. There are many things that are cellular that, um, that aren't living. Something that's just recently died, for example, would still be composed of cells, but uh, wouldn't necessarily be living. Of course, we'll talk much more about cells in this course as we continue on. Um, but the cell is, is the fundamental unit of life. Think about a, a, a red blood cell or a muscle cell in your body, for example. So a second characteristic of life is the concept of metabolism. Metabolism could be defined as the chemical reactions necessary for life. And there are two types of chemical reactions that, uh, that are involved with metabolism and a little later on we'll talk about uh, anabolism and catabolism. Basically, they're building reactions or breaking down reactions, reactions that require energy or reactions that release energy. So metabolism is about how organisms use energy. A third characteristic of life is growth all organisms grow, and that simply means an increase in size. Even a unicellular uh, bacterium, such as a, a Bacillus subtilis or something along those lines, when it's, when it's first created, when it's first divided from, uh, from the parent cell, it's much smaller, and then over time that cell will grow, and as it grows it, it increases in size. Now certainly growth is much different for something like a human being where we start out as a single celled zygote and not only do we grow, uh, but we grow and, and develop. Uh, but all organisms from bacteria to human beings uh, exhibit the characteristic of growth. So the fourth characteristic of life is the idea of response. And all organisms uh, can demonstrate response. And a way to define that would be a reaction or react to a stimulus. And so a stimulus is just a change in the environment. One of my favorite tricks to play on students in my classes is as they're writing down, react to a stimulus is to take my biology textbook and drop it on the floor. Of course, it makes a very loud noise and everybody jumps. And I kind of snicker at the class and say, see, you're alive, you demonstrated response. But even unicellular organisms have this ability to react to stimuli. For example, they may move 
toward a certain chemical or away from a certain chemical, that would be called chemotaxis. They may move towards the light or away from the light. So all living organisms demonstrate response. Now these four characteristics are characteristics of life that we think about on the individual level meaning an individual human being, an individual dog, an individual um, paramecium. But the last two characteristics of life that we're going to think about are characteristics that exist on the population level. And the population is defined as a group of similar organisms in a, in a defined area. And so we could talk about the population of flathead catfish in the Yakin River, for example. Um, so when we look at, uh, at characteristics of life on a population level, we talk about reproduction. Many of you may have uh, family members that are in their 70s or 80s and they've never had children of their own, but certainly they've been living. And so when we talk about reproduction, that's something that we think about on a population level. I've produced no offspring myself, but I'm certainly alive. But if all the members of a given population cease to reproduce, then that population would go extinct. If flathead catfish in the Yakin River, for example, ceased reproduction, then at some point in time there would be no more flathead catfish left in, in the Yakin River. So reproduction is uh, the, a fifth characteristic of life. The sixth characteristic of life is this idea of adaptation. And adaptation by definition takes place on the population level. Adaptation could be defined as uh, a change in the gene pool of a population. And so individuals cannot adapt because individuals don't change their their own genes, but in, individuals can acclimate. Sometimes students will ask questions about that and they'll say, well, why do football players go to Mile High Stadium a week early so they can adapt to that higher elevation? Well, the individual isn't adapting, the individual is acclimating, but populations adapt and that's when uh, they, there's a change in the genetic makeup of that population over time. So we are recognizing six characteristics of life, uh, the cell, metabolism, growth, response, reproduction, and adaptation. Now this is just one way of looking at the characteristics of life. Uh, there are other ways of doing that. For example, another video you may look at talks about a seventh characteristic of life and that's related to regulation. It's an interesting discussion to have one might say regulation requires metabolism and response. And so response and metabolism are, are very closely related to uh, regulation. But that's something for you to think about in perhaps an upcoming assignment.